It is the Flow Friday Night Sports Show, and we can't finish off uh, our program tonight without talking Murray Towns cricket with our next guest. He's back again, Big Bruce. How are you, mate? G'day there, Jason. Jason, and uh, look, uh, yeah, really excited. Murray Towns cricket last week. Gee, it dished up a few surprises in a huge weekend, didn't it? It certainly did. Uh, we've got a lot to talk about. It was a uh, prominent feature in our top 10 feats of the week earlier in the week. Uh, we're going to talk about one of those feats shortly. But firstly, uh, we had, I guess, the vanilla game of the round, which was between Jervois and Monado, and Monado did this fairly easy in the end. Yeah, they did it quite easy in the end. Jervois uh, batted first, won the toss and batted, and uh, that's probably the norm for them. Uh, if they can bat first, then they're short of not... Uh, Standing out in the field for 50 overs, aren't they? But uh, look, uh, 108, look, mediocre score. You can win some games with that, but uh, Jervois just not enough in the uh, the bowling attack to do that. Uh, top score was shared between uh, Daniel Gilmore, the captain, and Andrew Penhall, both sharing 18. Uh, quite a few starts here. Uh, Simon Gibbs, 17, and uh, Schutz, 15. And... Uh, well, an old stager. He's not in there for his batting. He's in there for his bowling. Jared Walshlager, he just does a lot of work around the club for the Jervois Cricket Club. He made 14, 15 extras in that 108. Best of the bowling for the Monado side. Well, it was the wickets were shared around, but the best come from Harley Hanson, who uh, trounced down four for 22 from 10 overs. So very economical as long as as well as taking some... Uh, some scouts there along the way. It's a pretty good performance by Harley Hanson. Two wickets to uh, Davin Leckie, who is a very experienced player, and singles going to Miles Pfeiffer and Alex Pfeiffer, Ty and Alex Pfeiffer. Indeed. So in for to 108, uh, as you said, Minato did it pretty easy. Three for 111 in the 35th. Of course, Murray Towns played 50 over matches. And uh, the spoils were Ty Fife and the captain not out on 52. And Daniel Matthews, who has come back to Monado this year from Tail and Bend with 47. Uh, pretty impressed with the Fifer's knock at 52 off 56 balls, if you don't mind. And uh, just looking through those figures, two fours and six maximums. So that's not a bad effort in a day's outing, six sixes in that uh, 52. So I, I judge from that that Ty don't like running too much because <laughs> uh, I'm timesing that out in my head as I read it. Uh, 44 uh, in boundaries, Bruce. There you go. It's just too quick for me there, Jason, as I waffle on. But uh, look, that's outstanding, isn't it? And a uh, good performance uh, to win the match. Best of the bowlers for Jervois. Well, it was a hard day. But best figures came from Brad Tow, who I've spoke about. Real uh, up and come of this kid. Uh, six overs, three maidens, two for seven. So that is extraordinary figures considering uh, one bloke at one end was smashing uh, the ball to all parts of the boundary. So well done to Brad Tower with um, Jones, the other wicket taker, one for 24 from eight. So good win there to uh, Monado over Jervois. Indeed it was, Bruce. Uh, our next game uh, to talk about, Wanderers taking on Salem Bend and this game had everything. A thrilling finish. Not a lot of runs. That's probably the one thing it did lack a little bit of, but plenty of wickets, plenty of action, plenty of excitement. And in the end, it was a hat-trick for Taylor and Bend and a one-wicket win. Oh, look, it went down to the wire, didn't it? Didn't it? And as we go through, uh, Wanderers won the toss and decided they'd have first hit, and they massed 111 from their 46.2 overs. So, Runs were pretty hard to come by. Best of the batting was Ben Dawson with 30 and uh, others to get starts. Williams down the bottom of the order with 18 and opening the batting, Sean Bartlett with 14. Uh, 22 sundry, so a fair bit in there, 12 wide. Uh, the best of the bowling came from, as you said in the intro, uh, Jake Prosser, who uh, cleaned up three batsmen uh, in a row to take a hat-trick in uh, just uh, an emphatic uh, performance. And he finished up with the fine figures, 10 overs, three maidens, four for 17. So, uh, and he had a wide and four wides and a no ball in that. So, uh, look, it would have looked a lot better, four for 12. But uh, a great hat-trick, nevertheless, for young Jake Prosser. Also amongst the wickets was Adrian Lloyd, 
the lad they call Skip out there, and he's uh, really skipped into it very well. Four for 22 off his 10 overs. A good performance by Adrian. And uh, doubling up there with uh, four apiece with uh, that hat-trick boy in Prosser. Singles to Shane and Merritt. Uh, in reply, Taylor and Ben, well, always the way, isn't it? A low score can be pretty hard to chase. And as we said, runs were hard to come by and they just crawled over the line, would you believe it? Nine down for 112 in the 45th over. An outstanding uh, finish and uh, top scoring was the absolute legend out there of the Tail and Bend Cricket Club. Really does revolve around Paul Baxter and he knocked up 46 from 108 balls. So it was pretty hard going and this guy's got a bit of class about him. Smashed three fours in that knock. Others to do well. Jake Prosser, a good double to probably earn him the man of the match, I'd say. 21 uh, for him and 9 for 112 to get the victory. Best of the bowling for the Wanderers. Uh, Williams, a good double for him. 4 for 16 from 10, a good performance. And Groves, 2 for 25 from 10, also amongst the multiple wicket takers. But at the end of the day, a good win for Taylor and Bend over Wanderers in Match two of round five, Murray Towns Cricket. My mail on the finish of this game too, Bruce, is when uh, the young man at number 11 came to the crease, strode to the crease, Jared Sheen. It was six required for victory. Um, he uh, just blocked out the first ball. And the second ball he faced, he hit for six to bring up the winning runs, the number 11 bat. There you go. Well, that's certainly got to be worth uh, an advance up the order next week, doesn't it? Uh, <laughs> that's that's captain, how you do it. <laughs> if I was captain, he's not batting at 11 next week. I think he's got to come up bat number nine next week. But that is an outstanding performance. Uh, maybe he just had a bit of a hit in the nets before. or uh, uh, No, they don't have a frothy these days, do they? But uh, <laughs> great performance by Jared Chain with that uh, and I think you might be right because I see there six runs, two balls faced, one six. So that is a, an outstanding. Well, you'd uh, throw the bat in the air with that performance, wouldn't you? To uh, yeah, get probably the... carried him off. Uh, <laughs> why not? Too fantastic performance. Well done, young man. Um, let's move to what was uh, the match of the round. We pegged it as such. Uh, My Palonga, the top side, taking on second place Manum. We've had a couple of these top of the table clashes so far, Maipo, and. Um, they'd won them all up until this point. Uh, they probably went in uh, at uh, the halfway mark relatively confident with the total they'd posted, but it wasn't enough, Bruce. Oh, look, this is a magnificent game. We live streamed this game and uh, on the Murray Lance Football and Netball Sporting Results. Maipo won the toss and batted, and uh, they amassed 176, eight down from their allotted 50 overs. Uh, getting amongst the runs it was Aaron Drum, who top scored with 41 from 92 balls, including five fours. Uh, so he batted very well, held the innings together. Wrigley at the top made 34. And there was a few players that got starts, including uh, young Keenan Haradine, 18. Uh, a good performance. A lot of sundries, 27, including 14 wides. So uh, a lot too many by the uh, Manham, which meant they had to chase some best of those bowlers. Well, it was two wickets shared apiece to uh, Josh Hancock, uh, two for 30 from nine, and uh, Max Worthley, two for 35 from seven. They were the multiple wicket takers as they were shared around pretty much after that with four players getting singles. In the run chase, Manham looking at uh, 177 uh, to get the victory. Well, I thought they had enough, my I, I didn't think uh, that Manham could get there they had a pretty shaky start where they lost two wickets at 55 and it was a couple of their uh, their guns in, uh, Jaden Crowley and Zach Muirhead. And then we seen a 52-run partnership between uh, Boylan and Nick Lindner and that really set them up. And Lindner went on with it to uh, finish 49 not out in a great performance. Uh, Dwayne Crowley came in and bashed them around 52 balls for 37 with five boundaries. And they got over the line in a thriller. Five for 177 in the 49th over, if you don't mind. It went down to the wire and it was very well uh, viewed on our live stream. So uh, great performance there by Manham to knock off the top team. Mipo still hold top spot with percentage. Um, but it was a absolutely uh, great spectacle for local cricket. 
um, to get this uh, close match, top of the table live stream. So a win there to Manham over Mike Longa. Excellent performance. Well done to the Manham crew. Let's have a look at who is scheduled to play who in round six this week. And let's hope we get the cricket in this week. Uh, We've all got our fingers crossed that the rain will disappear when we need it to. Uh, Which game will you be live streaming this week, Bruce? So hopefully all things going well. Hang on, just before we go to that, I did forget to mention the bowlers there. Oh, yes. for yep. It was uh, one wicket apiece to uh, Jordan Hine, Aaron's Rim, Brady Wrigley, and uh, Sam Elliott, and Shannon Callery. So they used uh, seven bowlers in attempt to uh, win that match, but uh, five of were successful, all single wicket takers, which was probably where they uh, lost the match. They just didn't have a firing uh, wicket taker, even Aaron Zrim uh, these days. Zrimi, look at those figures from Zrimi. Ten overs, four maids, one for 17. They just, uh, everyone just treats him with very caution and uh, mm. and that's why his figures look so calm at the day end of the day's play. But a uh, good win there by Manham. Yep. This weekend, mate, uh, we are travelling, well, not travelling very far, thank goodness, because the uh, We are expecting some rain. We're heading over to the Murray Bridge Showgrounds. So for the big clash between Wanderers and Monado, should be a thriller on the Wanderers' home deck over there at the showgrounds. Um, So that should be uh, one really good game. Uh, Live streaming from 12.30 on Saturday, Maryland's football netball sporting results. Um, So that should be a thriller. Um, I'll probably tip uh, Monado there. They're in good form and should get the job done in round six of the opening match. They are in uh, good form, and Wanderers let that one slip last week to Salem. So uh, at the moment, they're in fifth spot on the ladder, out of the top four, and they'd be grumpy about that. So should be a cracking game at the showgrounds. And uh, fingers crossed, weather permitting, I'll be heading up there to call alongside of you, mate. Yeah, certainly look forward to that. Other matches, uh, Manham will host the Jervois uh, Fly Park team. Um Manham should get the job done after last week's good win, so that'll be a pretty tough day's play there for Jervois. They may be hoping for a rain out so they get to five points each or uh, or even points. So, uh, but yeah, Manham fairly well comfortable to uh, pen that one in. And the other match is at Tail and Ben, where Tail and Ben host Mike Belonga. And again, Mike Belonga will be looking for revenge to get back on the winner's list so you wouldn't want to be playing them after last week's defeat um, so at Tail and Bend, look they had a close good win last week um, but gee for me on paper Maipo looked far too strong and should get the job done so winners in round 6 should be Mike Longer uh, defeating Tail and Bend, Manham defeating Jervois and Monado should be too strong for Wanderers Excellent Bruce, so it's going to be a big round of matches just before we go um, I've got to mention this because uh, it made our uh, our top 10 feats of the week last week. It's probably not a feat you want, uh, but in the A2 cricket there, Paponda last week, rolled by Meningi for just 16, Bruce. 16. Yes, uh, amazing uh, performance. Uh, as I have spoken on this program before, I've been involved in being rolled for 10, and it's not a very good feeling, especially when you have played for the side that rolled you um, but uh, mine was uh, quite unbelievable. Uh, one guy got eight. I got one. There was one sundry, and the rest of the rest of them all got duck. So it would have been pretty similar to that. Uh, uh, the big wicket out there, of course, for Ponder is uh, is I uh, think Peter. I think his name is Pete Leadham. So uh, uh, they got him, and uh, the rest fell like dominoes. And uh, all out for sixteen. It's not a very good sight on the scorebook, but uh, you just I'd... can't get the pads on the players quick enough that are coming out. <laughs> I wonder how many got timed out, Bruce. But I did hear um, a, a, lower, a much lower score than than that and an even lower score than 10, Bruce. Uh, I had someone send in a message through the week saying that the same club got bowled out for eight a couple of years ago. Wow, we. Yeah, go. no, that's... Not a very good day's play, is it? Uh, you're going to be in. You're going to be in the sheds pretty early, uh, getting rolled for eight. I would have thought, but yeah, uh, I, doubt, I doubt you'd even have the frothies cold by then. But, uh, <laughs> look, uh, not a good performance, and hopefully, Paponda can uh, regroup this weekend in their match. But uh, look, yeah, some uh, unbelievable scenes around cricket, uh, local cricket, and we look forward again next week 
bring it all in Murraytown's cricket. Thanks, buddy. Yeah, we do. Looking forward to it. Actually, uh, as we go, we'll, we'll, we've got the A2 page in front of me opened up here. So um, you've been calling a few of these games. Uh, who's the top side in the A2 competition there? So uh, in the A2s, um, well, you just caught me uh, on the guard there. We had to look at the matches this week in yeah. A2. We've got... Uh, Wanderers playing Monado, Manham playing Jervois, and Taylor Ben. Uh, and on my little page hasn't uh, hasn't updated. So, uh, well, I've uh, got the have... uh, I've got the matches here for this week. So let's yep, have a look so. at those. So um, Meningi are playing Ramblers, I believe, in round six action at Meningi Oval, and uh, they'll be out at Bear Park. Uh, how are Ramblers going in the cricket uh, at the moment? Oh, they're just. Running along very slowly, so Meningi should get the job done there. They look a pretty uh, good side there a couple of weeks ago at Imperials. And Imperials play for Ponda, so hopefully for Ponda can regroup for that match. Um, Murray Bridge Imperials would be the favourites in that game. Karunda having the buy, and of course, next weekend we go to A2 on our live stream and we'll be taking the big game in. Uh, I think it's Karunda taking on... Uh, the might of uh, Meningi. So that should be an absolute uh, ripper, Jason. Uh, Top of the table clash, yeah. So, uh, yeah, certainly looking forward to uh, giving those guys down in the A2 a little bit of exposure. Yeah, Murray Bridge Imperials taking on uh, Karunda in round eight. So I think it is. Is that right? Yep, uh, uh, round, round seven, I think you've got next seven. week. Uh, yep. Round seven, yep. Round seven, just let me have a little check. Karunda uh, and Meningi next week at Karunda Oval. We'll head out there for the six, and uh, that should be a big game for top of the table class, Karunda and Meningi. So uh, a heads up there for those teams for their live stream of that match. Um, so looking forward to that, but uh, also looking forward to this Friday night uh, where we'll be live streaming what should be a very tough, hard-fought contest between Lobethal and Lenswood Rangers in the Torrens Valley League uh, in the Alexander and Eastern Hills T20 competition. And we are very, we're very excited, uh, Jason. We'll be uh, debuting at the Mount Barker Sports Summit Park up there. So looking forward to that brand new deck up there. Turf pitch uh, worth 60 grand. And certainly looking forward to live streaming that match on Friday night in the Alexander and Eastern Hills T20, which we'll be taking in a game each week. Um, big thanks to our sponsors there too in Strath, Mitre 10, Closey's Supermarket, uh, Silver Fleece, and of course, none other than the Bridge Hotel at Langhorns Creek. So some great sponsors getting behind us for the live stream, and we look forward to covering that Alexander and Eastern Hills T20 competition. Should be a beauty, bigger and better, 12 teams, and uh, the grand final in January at the Summit Sports Park. Mm. Under light. Good stuff, Bruce. Well, uh, we'll catch up with you next week, mate. Uh, look at the results and uh, preview some matches. Good calling across the weekend, and I'll see you on Saturday, fingers crossed. All right, mate. I'll pray for some no rain. <laughs> we'll see you next week.